Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. So what I'd like to do is show you how to uh, graph an absolute value function with multiple transformations. So <clears throat> are using transformations to graph a tr absolute value function. So basically, you know, the main important thing here is that we have our parent graph, which is y equals absolute value of x. And you can see what the graph looks like. And I correlated a couple points, and as well as created the table. Because basically, in this example, our absolute value equation, all it has is some transformations. We have h and some k. And now we have a negative in front, which I need to represent. So now our new transformation equation is y equals a times x minus h um, plus k. However, um, a is going to be less than 0. Okay, um, So it's actually going to be negative. So the shape of the graph is still going to be exactly the same as this graph. It's going to produce a v. And the slope between like the points is going to be over 1, up 1. That's not going to change. And in my next video, I'll show you when that's going to start changing with condensing and um, stretching. But for right now, all we have to do is identify some transformations. Now, hopefully you watched my first video where I talked about the difference between horizontal and vertical transformations. Remember, h is going to be shifting your graph left or right, and k shifts your graph up or down. Um, where k, when it's positive, goes up. k, when it's negative, goes down. h, when it's, um, when it's x minus 3, that goes to the right. When it's x plus 3, that's going to be shifting 3 units to the left. So when you have multiple transformations, or once you're kind of familiar with that, I think the best thing to do next is to start actually just writing down your transformations. We know that the vertex is going to be at 0. So when I write down my transformations, that's basically what I'm going to do is transfer. I'm going to shift my graph over to the new transformation. And then what I'm going to do, uh, once I move it over to the new transformation, um, once I move it over to the new transformation, then I basically just graph my, exact, my parent graph from the new vertex. So over here, my first transformation, x minus 1, is going to tell me to shift the graph right 1 and down 5. Okay, So that's the only transformations. I have two tra different transformations going on here. So if I was graphing the parent graph, the vertex would be at 0, 0. Right? But now I'm going to shift it 1 unit to the right and down 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So now that's my new vertex. So you can see the vertex has gone down over 1, down 5. Now I just recreate my parent graph from there. And remember, the parent graph is going to have the same slope, over 1, up 1, over 1, up 1, over 1, up 1. That ratio of the slopes of your line has not changed. All right. Again, we'll get into values when that's going to change. OK, so for the next one, I have x plus 3, x plus 1. So that's going to be tell me to shift the graph left 3, down 1. And I like writing them down because I, just like you, will make little minor mistakes and I'll forget. So if you write them down, it's just easy to remember exactly what you need to do. So I'm going to go left 3, 1, 2, 3, and then down 1. Oops. <laughs> What? Exactly. See, down. That's not down. It's up one. See the mistake? I didn't even do that on purpose, I swear. You need to go up one. So now that's my new vertex. It was here. I went left three, up one. Then, again, I just follow the patterns. Over one, up one. Over one, up one. Over one, up one. OK, so what happens when we have a negative in front of our absolute value? Well, think about it exactly this case. Think about going back in the table. No, ma no matter what you take the absolute value of, so the absolute value of negative 2 is going to be positive 2, right? All of these are always going to be positive. But if you multiply it by negative, what that does is that makes now all of these negative. So if your x values are negative and positive, going like the v, but then all your y values are negative, what that's doing is it's taking this graph and flipping it over. Now the graph, instead of going up, is now going to be going down. So again, the slopes, you know, over one, down one, over one, up one, over one, up one, is now just going to be over one, down one, over one, down one. So here, we don't have any transformations except for the negative. That means I'm not moving left or right. My vertex is still going to be at 0, 0. So I'm still at 0, 0. And again, as I mentioned, instead of going over one, up one, I'm now going to go over 1, down 1. I'm going to go over 1, down 1. Over 1, down 1. And just follow through with that pattern. 
Okay? Then it also is possible to now have some multiple transformations. So when I see the negative, oops, I didn't even write this down. Reflect x axis. All right? So whenever I see the negative, that's like the first thing I want to write down because I almost always will forget about the negative. And then I'll go back right at the end and be like, oh, shoot, I forgot the negative. So I always write it down. First thing, reflect x axis and then left 5. So again, since we're going left 5, what that's going to tell me is before I graph it, my vertex, instead of starting at 0, 0, is now going to be to the left 5. So I'm going to go to the left 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Then the negatives tell me my graph is going to go down. So I'm going to basically just rewrite again that paragraph. So I'm going to go 1, 2, 3. So over 1, down 1. Oops, over 1, down 1. Over 1, down 1. Over 1, down 1. My graph's not the best, but there we go. Okay. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is how you graph um, using your transformations of an absolute value function with multiple transformations. Thanks.